you've got a case of arachnophobia, today's movie will definitely make your skin crawl. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling Gianfranco Gianni's long-lost cosmic horror flick, the Spider Labyrinth. Released in 1988, Spider Labyrinth has been something of a lost film for years. I first discovered it back in college in the early 90s on a grainy old bootleg from somewhere like Video Search in Miami, and I instantly fell in love with it. For years, the only real way to see this one was a crappy 360p rip on YouTube, or terrible old bootleg dubs that had pictures softer than Drake. For the past decade, I've been bugging every major boutique horror Blu-ray label to finally bring this one stateside, and last November, my prayers were answered when Severum released Spider Labyrinth on UHD and Blu-ray. Thank God, the wait was worth it. The movie is a cult classic, and it's never looked better. If you love cosmic horror in the Lovecraft vein, believe me, you'll want to see this one. But enough about that. Can Spider Labyrinth kill enough hapless academics to earn a coveted 5 barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Carl of Cthulhu, God, that's a great name. My good pal Paul and Scott C. Smith. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment and description below. And now, let's get bloody. We open with action. I guess we're going in media res this week. I know Dad's stash of penthouses is in here somewhere. A young Michael Sarah preps for his first home invasion. Anyway, eventually this kid shows up. Screw you, Timmy. I'm going to Narnia. Oh god, is this kid gonna kill him? I told you if you gave me a nipple twister, I'd kill you, and by god, I meant it. Oh, wait, he's not gonna kill him. At least not with the gun. You're trapped in, Alan. You're trapped in. Let's see you get out of that. Kids. Monsters through and through. The bad news is that kid's trapped in the wardrobe. The good news is he's got a friend to pass the time with. Man, this live action version of Charlotte's Web is weird. But this is all just football practice. And he's got a phone call. Let's hope it's a call to action. House establishing shot. And we learn who the guy in the bed is. Good morning, Professor Whitmore. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, oh, yeah, Kenny Loggins heads off to work. All right, let me see if I can get Stretch and Bobito on this thing. Whoa, watch out for the title card. Glad <laughs> to see they put zero effort into this card. And absolutely zero Italians pretending to be Americans here. <laughs> oh, God, four screenwriters. Never a good sign. Fun fact, people speculated for years that Riccardo Aragno was a pseudonym for Gianfranco Gianni. It wasn't. Aragno was, in fact, a collaborator with Stanley Kubrick, which probably explains some of the Kubrick nods we'll see later in this movie. But we do get effects from Sergio Stivaletti. So you know we're gonna get some gore. Oh, he's moving on up, like George Jefferson. Directed by Gianfranco Gianni. This was his first feature film. And like many Italian horror directors from the 80s, he spent most of his career making Italian films and other genres and directing for television. He actually got his start in music videos. I'll just let myself in, thanks. Oh God, he's got a meeting with HR. Yes, he wasn't a tenured professor. Man, you know you're screwed when it's the HR guy and a priest. This dude looks like he should be trying to sell me on J.G. Wentworth. As it turns out, Professor Kenny Loggins here isn't getting fired. He's just getting exiled to Hungary to find some other missing professor. It goes without saying that this project must be kept absolutely secret to avoid speculation before we have all the answers. Right, no one must know of the Crystal Pepsi before we launch it. Oh, and Kenny, we need you to come in on Saturday for the team building work party. We're not paying you, but there'll be pizza. Studious Kenny Loggins is like, I think we need to have a heart to heart about this. This conversation is heading to the danger zone. I'm not all right with this at all. Most Kenny Loggins song puns in one line? Maybe. This is the moment in the interview where they ask me, where do you see yourself in five years? And my brain is screaming at me, don't say not here. Don't say not here. All right, thanks for coming in. We'll get back to you. Never. God, this is straight out of a Mentos commercial. Fresh goes better with Mentos, fresh and full of life. Mentos, the fresh maker. Oh, yeah, this guy doesn't look ominous at all. Discount John Elway is like, I just don't see him making it here in sales. Budapest establishing shot. I gotta say, it's wild to see this movie look so good. For years, I've had to suffer through a crappy bootleg version that looks like it was recorded through a glass covered in Vaseline. Jesus, it's like a Foster Grant commercial. 
At any rate, it looks like his driver is a real thigh society kind of lady. It appears we'll be filming this scene entirely in close-ups in the rearview mirror and with leering thigh shots, thanks. Ah, respect my personal space, Kenny. Oh, she's got the Queen Latifah starter kit earrings. <laughs> Looks like they're bugging out. If you only knew, your letters have a great effect on Professor Roth. Oh, yeah. They make him scream. Whoever wrote this is a semi-literate moron, mostly. But that's an effect, right? And sure, I suppose we can just drive over to the main plot in real time. Eh, got nothing better going on. Oh, God, here comes the Avon dude. Act like we're not home. Must. Not. Blink. She's the creepiest Uber driver ever. I'd like to take a swing at getting this movie rolling. Deliverance Kid. Budapest version. Anyway, he heads inside where he meets... Annie Lennox? Do you guys even remember the Eurythmics? Christ, I'm old. And she's got a warning for him before he meets Dr. Roth. My husband might tell you some strange things. Strange like the neighbor's dog is sending him coded messages or what? And Professor Roth has the same response to human interactions I do. Seeing people excites him, but tires him. Well, it tires me anyway. The excites me part is a lie. Oh god, another meeting. Is this meeting the movie? Oh, come in, I was just peeping on my neighbor. She's some base topless. Awkward. This is Professor Roth. No relation to Eli. Oh god, he's thinking his own deep thoughts. Who is going to prove to me that you really are who you say you are? Anyway, I brought you my resume. This interview was a bit of a disaster. His wife is a great caregiver, though. Doesn't want him to miss his tren injection. Don't forget, you have to have your injection soon. Good, now she's gone. Now I can tell you my wife isn't human. She's a giant spider. And while he's spilling the beans about what's going on, this happens. Oh god, we're being attacked by musketeers. Quick, everyone move 20 feet inside the house. We'll be out of range. Well, he's gone, but I've got his little black book. At least I won't be lonely here for the next two weeks. Oh, Annie Lennox is back. Do you know what sweet dreams are made of? And then shit gets ominous. Do as you wish. I want you. I think Annie Lennox made this same threat to Dave Stewart right before the band broke up. It's a nice little flourish that going in and out of this house is filmed in a sort of canter perspective. It's a subtle nod to the fact that things aren't right in Professor Roth's home. Oh god, his Uber driver is back. Is she stalking him? She's kind of like Eastern European Fran Drescher. I'm terribly worried about the professor. I am too. I mean, how's he gonna get Gilligan and the gang off the island? <laughs> Wait, wrong professor. Look at him, he's like, God, does this broad ever stop talking? Inside the hotel, this lady is petting her kitten. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. I mean, she's holding a cat. And now she's thinking some deep thoughts. Mentos should make a line of mints with motivational quotes on them. We could call them complimentos. Then she gets really weird. Where do you come from? Dallas. Oh, what a fascinating city. I'm planning to go there very soon. Red hair, weird accent, no emotion. Is she related to this lady? This is absolutely fascinating. Dear Diary, everyone in Budapest is weird, and I still can't find a job. Oh, wait, he's just reading some Lovecraft. They've entered my mind. They prevent me from continuing. The great cobweb is closing every passage. Yeah, nothing better to do. Guess it's time to call up some of these ladies in the professor's little black book and see who's down to party. This was like Tinder for Gen X. A phone and some Polaroids and your next month's phone bill was 800 bucks. Ah, uh, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna pound one out while I watch my Uber driver change clothes from across the street. And then he's out. Professor, where are you going in this weather? Gotta get to the studio. Working on a new track with Michael McDonald and he's a real taskmaster. Man, even the panhandlers in Budapest dress up for work. But he's not just wanting money for food, he's got an ominous pronouncement to make. You must leave this place immediately. Maybe you're still in time. But you have to escape this very night! Look, I've had many conversations like this with street people. Like you'll be back sucked into the vortex, don't you understand? Hmm, looks like something's happening at Professor Roth's place. And now he's gotta talk to the cops. This guy looks like chubby, younger Donald Pleasance. Tonight on Law & Order Budapest, discount Max Grevy and Mike Logan try to solve the murder of a professor. Oh, looks like the professor decided to hang around for a while. He's <laughs> like a piñata. And he's covered in strings of white goo. 
<laughs> Must be an Annabelle Chong cosplay. Hell yeah. No, I mean spider webs. <laughs> Wait, why is the Uber driver here? I think Annie Lennox has to be the prime suspect. Where's the professor's wife? What wife? So, wanna grab a bite? Maybe Netflix and chill? <laughs> God, they really did go to dinner. I guess they can fill in the hotel lady on what's happened. I wonder how she feels about all of this. This is absolutely fascinating. It's so fascinating she's taken a fingering her pearl necklace. Hell yeah. No, I mean her actual pearl necklace. That guy is definitely not absolutely fascinating. Must not blink. Anyway, she's got a theory of the crime. Maybe they were looking for something that had to do with the research, don't you think? Uber driver, nanny, and a regular Sherlock Holmes. This is a renaissance woman right here. You don't want to talk to me about it? Well, I mean, to be fair, you are just his Uber driver. He probably doesn't want to overshare. And now they're the last guests. The whole restaurant staff is waiting for them to leave so they can close and go home. Well, it's been a day. Time to settle in with some pay-per-view adult cinema. Looks like they've got Casa Erotica 14. Housekeep. Oh, God. Hey, is this the Suspiria Dance Academy? If you have any good sense, you better pack your bags and leave as soon as you can. Um, have you met this guy? He clearly has no good sense. And this is my exact reaction anytime a woman hits on me. If you have something to tell me, you better make it more clear. And jump scare. I'm really afraid for you. Take my advice, Professor Whitmore. <gasps> Maria? Hey, no fraternizing with the guests while on the clock, Maria. Filmed in Claudio Fragasso vision. Hmm, looks like things are about to get pretty sheety for Maria. And it's time for peeping on the nanny, round two. Oh yeah, take it off, baby. Daddy likes. Except he's getting diverted into Narnia. <laughs> Not gonna lie, totally forgot about the trapped in the wardrobe opening. Needless to say, Genevieve clearly didn't have a no full frontal clause in her contract. I can't show that because Prutube hates nudity, but yeah, I mean, even Crazy Ralph is catching the show. And it looks like this chick is three sheets to the wind. Full GI Zoom football practice. Back with Sheet Girl, I think she might have wandered into Suspiria. Oh yeah, she's about to get sheet faced. Ah, what the hell is this? She's all like, thanks for coming to my sheet maze. Quite a magic trick too. She screamed abracastabra and made the knife disappear. Say what you will, but this movie has a lot of twists so far. Oh, look, it's a Hand That Rocks the Cradle remake. Turns out she doesn't actually have a baby. It's her dead son's room kept as a shrine. And it turns out she's a nihilist. There's no God. There's no light. There's nothing. Honestly, that must be exhausting. Hey, is R. Kelly in that closet? Oh, no, it's just the dead girl. Man, look at the buildup of gunk on that shower head. They need some CLR. Oh wait, it's a roof. My bad. So now we come to the bathhouse scene. And this isn't weird at all. Anyway, the professor is still flummoxed about the screams. Last night I was woken up by screams coming from upstairs. Yeah, professor, it's a hotel and people like to bone in hotels. I mean, screams probably aren't all that unusual. Discount Fran Drescher is like, speaking of boning, can I make it any more obvious to you? But Alan doesn't get it. Hey, wanna come over and look at Polaroids and my stone tablets? After more jibber jabber, she says this. I know everything. <laughs> Every married guy has heard that before. And he heads off in her car. Shit, it's a manual. I can't drive stick. Turns out his lead is a dead end. Literally. I am so lost. I wish someone would invent GPS already. Man, if he doesn't find this place soon, he's gonna run out of gas. Dude really should have just taken an Uber or let his wannabe girlfriend drive him. And still driving. I mean, how big is this town? He's had to have made two laps by now. Hmm, guess I better check the map. That was GPS before we had GPS for you kids. Back to driving. <laughs> this is all very riveting. And dead end. Doctorate degree, yet defeated by a simple paper map. Fun fact, this was the inspiration for the Doobie Brothers' It Keeps You Running song. Oh, here's the shop. I was supposed to make two lefts, not two rights. Oh, great customers. Man, I haven't seen a ball in a horror movie this ominous since Phantasm. Yes, and he's just rolling through, killing time, and not here at the antique shop to actually buy anything. Oh god, here comes Spider Woman. She might not be here to kiss him, but she is definitely here to give him a taste of her pimp hand. Dude really sold that pimp hand too. And another. 
Great, finally found the place and now they're closed. Oh, and here's another canted shot. Back inside. By God, she sent him up for the choke slam, King. <laughs> Maybe my finest JR to date. Oh yeah, stick around. Come on, has there ever been a less heroic hero in a movie than this dude? Will he ever actually do anything? He's looking for the owner, but all he really finds is a jump scare. <gasps> it's a good thing this place is practically a library because he's gonna need to book it out of there. And back into the closet. Is this a metaphor? Oh hey, Crazy Ralph is back. Told you not to go into that wardrobe. It's got a death curse. Wow, <laughs> look at this tunnel. I bet making it required a lot of boring work. That is a top-notch dad joke right there. Anyway, Crazy Ralph is delivering the exposition. So Roth was killed because he discovered the existence of their sect. Yes, thanks for keeping up. How did you get a doctorate again? Anyway, Crazy Ralph has taken him back to his place. Oh yeah, really like what you've done with the place. Has a whole mid-century modern hobo vibe going on. Ah, in 4K you can see each individual pore on this dude's face. I will say it is nice they put mood lighting in the sewer caves though. Now, go with the spider god, my son. God, what an idiot. If he's humanity's hope, we're doomed. Holy blue filter. It's like a wham video or something in here. Oh, I bet he's gonna find One-Eyed Willie's treasure. Here's where the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were born. Oh shit, here comes Spider Lady. Come on, Mooey, focus. And here comes the ball of death again. Should have given this thing an actor's credit. Oh God, what the hell? Now our spider lady is drooling white goo. Hell yeah. No, not like that, I mean spider silk. And really, just add your own spit or swallow joke there. Hey, come on up. She must have a super strong tongue. And so much for Crazy Ralph. Now who will deliver this movie's exposition? But before we get to the climax, let's stop for another great moment in horror film acting. No! Oh, great. Straight out of the sewer like he's an honorary member of DOS FX. Fortunately, he gets saved by the cops. Or did he? And then a fight breaks out. Don't you backseat driver me, pal. He escapes, but ruins his sweet members only jacket in the process. And I guess he's seen enough because he's looking for his Uber driver. I'm gonna need a lift out of town. He's like the drunk ex who shows up trying to reconcile at 3 a.m. Yeah, guess I'll just doom scroll social media while I wait for. Oh God, are they gonna hook up? Did his booty call strategy actually work? Hold still, I'm just gonna ram my ovipositor down your throat and lay my spider eggs in your chest. It really is the most guy thing in the world to be like, I'm being chased by a spider call, but this hot chick wants to do it, so I'm gonna stop for sex. If you listen closely, you can hear the zoomers screaming in agony during this entire sex scene. So um, now that they did it, does this mean he's the new Spider-Man? Peter Parker, Miles Morales, Alan Whitmore, and in the least surprising plot development ever, football practice. And here comes the big reveal. Oh yeah, we've all been there. Brought home a chick from the bar only to discover what she really looked like the next morning. And I guess she's ready for round two. And she likes it rough. And a fight breaks out. This is like when Randy Savage was the spider or that whole terrible Arachna Man gimmick. No, not the liquor cabinet. Someone save the J&B. You could say this lady is a real pain in the glass. Well, I killed a spider woman. Better hide in the closet. And in typical cosmic horror fashion, they have a grand plan for Alan. And you will spread our seed so that the cobweb will become bigger. You've always been the caretaker, Alan. Wait, did this just turn into eyes wide shut? Well, that or maybe American guinea pig. Oh, what the hell is this? We're just going full Kubrick now. We've even got a star child. Oh yeah, that kid looks great. But wait, it gets better. And I'm sure this is nothing to get alarmed over. There's some really great gore from Sergio Stivaletti here that we can't show. So if you're trying to guess the barf bag rating, keep that in mind. Okay, this special effect though is definitely stretching the special part. And now the initiation is complete. Honestly, this just could be a really bad case of the DTs. And now he's home. And somehow he got a second interview with the Intextus people. <laughs> Plus he's a liar. But after Ross's death, I was unable to complete the work. But here comes the swerve. A registered letter arrived from Budapest. It was full of Polaroids, of a tablet, 
taken from every possible angle. We feel sure that you'll be able to tell us the meaning of the scribbles on that tablet. It is nice. They keep this vital information in a generic file cabinet, though. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to read through Elway's HR file while I'm down here. Hey, guys, you're not going to believe. Oh, where'd everyone go? So, how was work today? Oh, it was pretty dead. I'm the Spider-Man now. Ooh, and freeze frame ending. Drink. So, what have we learned from Spider Labyrinth? Well, for starters, that the Italians could make some pretty good Lovecraft pastiches. I have adored Spider Labyrinth since the first time I saw it on a grainy bootleg back in the 90s, and finally having it on Blu-ray is like a dream come true. There's just something unsettling about this one. It nails the cosmic horror tropes, but it has that Italian style too. It's a really unique hybrid. But enough about that. Can Spider Labyrinth spin enough webs to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card. In terms of gross anatomy, Spider Labyrinth is solid. We're treated to spider mutations, the crazy spider lady makeup, multiple stabbings, and that wild spider baby transformation. The gore comes in hot at the end, and we couldn't show a lot of it, but trust me, it's there. Because of that, I'm happy to give Spider Labyrinth a respectable three barf bag rating. This is a modestly sick little flick, but it's also really quite good. Looking for another European riff on the works of H.P. Lovecraft? Then be sure to check out my review of Dark Waters. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.